السمو الملكي الامير تركي فيصل صاحب سمو الشيخ مكتوم بن حشر المكتوم معالي رئيس الوزراء اليمني السابق عبد الكريم الالياني معالي الوزير مروان خير الدين السيدات والساده الكرام يسعدنا ويشرفنا ان نكون معكم اليوم بغية تعريفكم على مؤسسة بيوت انستيتيوت من خلال أعضاء المجلس الاستشاري والإداري. أنا أنزيرا رسلان مديرة البرامج في بيوت انستيتيوت. بدأت العمل بالمؤسسة مؤمنة بدور الشابات والشباب في صنع القرار في المنطقة العربية والعالم. فنحن شركاء معكم في صنع المستقبل وتحقيق التطلعات تطلعات على الصعيد الاقتصادي الاجتماعي والثقافي. وهذه الشراكة التي أتكلم عنها هي أحد الركائز الأساسية في مؤسسة بيوت انستيتيوت فنحن بالنهاية نتعلم من خبرتكم ونأمل أن تدعمونا بيوت انستيتيوت تسعى أن تكون حافزا للتفكير بإبداع وبأفعال بين الأجيال لالتقاط الفرص والبناء عليها نحن مجمع فكري مستقل عصري منبثق من المنطقة العربية نسعى إلى تحقيق تأثير إيجابي على مستوى السياسات المحلية والعالمية. وبداية اسمحوا لي أن أن أطلب من السيدة التي هي أولا المستشارة الاستراتيجية لرئيس مجلس الإدارة التنفيذي في شركة شعاع وهي أيضا أحد أعضاء في المجلس الإداري في بنك باركليز السويسري وأحد أعضاء المجلس الاستشاري في بيوت انستيتيوت. هي السيدة سوى نشأت التي نشكرها جزيل الشكر على س... وهي التي تكرمت في استضافة الغداء اليوم السيدة سوى نشأت بليز somebody we don't want to remember right now in Egypt, but anyway. Um, Highnesses, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will uh, I will talk in English uh, for the benefit of uh, the few guests who actually don't speak Arabic with us today. Um, thank you for joining us, first of all. Rada uh, for those who don't know her, and uh, I think everybody, most everybody knows her, and who doesn't, please let's make sure that you do meet her before, uh, before you leave today has been the driving uh, force behind the Beirut Institute pretty much single-handedly and on a shoestring budget, I might add. And for that, my admiration continues to grow for her. Uh, I tell you, it's been super tough. I've been watching her uh, work on the Beirut Institute from the beginning a few years ago. And I sometimes wonder how on earth does she keep going? Because honestly, with the, uh, with the roadblocks that she's had, I would just said forget it. I mean, you know, this is just too hard, it's too much of a pain. But she continues to push on, uh, and that is because of her passion, uh, true passion. Uh, she is passionate about giving back. Uh, she is passionate because she wants to get people uh, engaged, people to think of positive scenarios uh, for solutions. Whether it's councils on policy, on women, on innovation, on aspiration, or on youth. Uh, the Beirut Institute, what, what is it? It's simply a solution-oriented, independent think tank that hopes to accomplish something uh, that we call the 4040. And this is where uh, the youth angle comes in. In which we would have 40% of the community of the Beirut Institute under the age of 40, which correctly would reflect the realities of life in our region. Uh, this is not about having uh, establishment uh, pontificate down at, at the youth. This is about listening to the youth. It's about collectively finding uh, solutions that create true impact. Uh, if I may say on behalf of the, both the board of directors as well as the advisory committee, we are collectively passionate about this because we believe that we must take ourselves seriously in the region then the world can start to take us seriously. Let's take ourselves seriously first. We have all listened to uh, and participated in global impacts outside of the region. Uh, we still continue to really lack a collective, uh, homegrown voice for the region as a whole. And I think this is the gap that the Beirut Institute can really fill. Um, building a think tank is a very lengthy 
process. Uh, it's a very challenging process. Uh, again, uh, Ramit, I'm sorry to embarrass you, but you have worked yourself uh, very ragged. Ramit said, please don't embarrass me, keep talking about me. I have no choice but to do it because you've done this single-handedly. We really have, honestly. And I'm amazed. Uh, financing continues to be very difficult, and which is why I think it's important for us to have days like this to raise the awareness of what the way is to do this, what it is that we can do, uh, and we need to sort of continue to reach out. We need to continue to reach out to the private sector and to individuals because we want to be independent. We do not want this to become a you know, government subsidized uh, entity. We really, we really want to be independent. Uh, we will continue to have days like this. Uh, we will continue to have thought workshops uh, and more, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, more, more things that will be announced uh, during, the, during this luncheon, inshallah. We need to increase our visibility and our activities, and with your help, uh, inshallah, we will, uh, we will be able to do that. So thanks again for being here, and uh, I hope you enjoy your lunch. We're going to have um, a few, um, a few uh, short uh, speeches, and then we will continue with our lunch. Thank you. على مثل الإصرار والمثابرة وأغنتني بخبرتها الواسعة لطالما استمعت إلى تحليلاتك الواسعة إلى تحليلاتك خلف الشاشات وفي الصحف إنه شرف كبير لي أن أعمل معك يوميا وأن أكون بين أعضاء المجلس المجلسين إنها المؤسسة والرئيسة التنفيذية لبيوت انستيتيوت ومديرة مكتب الحياة في نيويورك كبيرة المراسلين الدبلوماسيين ومحللي السياسة والاستراتيجيات الدولية اسمحوا لي أن أدعو ماي بوس السيدة راقدة لامران في الحقيقة لست أنا الرائدة في هذه المؤسسة قد بدأت الفكرة معي ولكني بدون أعضاء المجلس الإداري والمجلس الاستشاري إني لا شيء وفي الواقع إنكم أنتم من دعم الفكرة وأخذها إلى التحقيق إلى التنفيذ وكلكم خير ولكم هذه المؤسسة أنا فكرت في بيروت إنستيتوت لتكون نقطة انطلاق لنتحاور معا لنعمل معا لنفكر معا لنبحث عن الحلول معا ونأخذ المناسبات التي من شأنها أن تطعنا في بيئتنا في موقع بناء المؤسسات الديمقراطية وأيضا ليكون لنا موقع مختلف عالميا بالطبع هناك مؤسسات فكرية مهمة جدا منطلقة من المنطقة العربية ولكن نحاول نحن أن نتميز بأن يكون لنا بعد عالمي بدءا في الأمم المتحدة وما بعد أريد أن أقول أن بوجودكم وبمشاركتكم معنا يمكن لنا أن نكون متميزين في هذه المسيرة أريد أن أشكر بكل تأكيد كل أعضاء مجلس الإدارة والمجلس الاستشاري وبالذات الموجودين معنا الذين سأعرفهم بعد قليل ولكن أريد أيضا أن أشكر الذين هم شركاء لنا في دعم مؤسسة بيروت انستيتيوت الذين اتوا من بيروت بالذات خاصة عندنا من انفو برو طبعا الانفو برو كانت ستقيم لنا ستنفذ المؤتمر الذي اضطررنا لتأجيله واضطررنا لتأجيله لأسباب أمنية في بيروت ولكن استمرينا في العمل نحو أن لا ننسى في بيئة صنع قرارات وتفكير القرارات وقمنا بما يسمى soft launch في عدة مناسبات منها ما كان لنا دور فيه في مثلا مسألة اللاجئين السوريين ووضعت هذه الأزمة على البنية التحدية في لبنان وفي مصر عفوا مش مصر وفي الأردن وبالتالي قمنا بأكثر من نشاط على أي حال سنة هذه الأمور ستكون متوافرة لكم لديكم بعد قليل عبر شهادات الذين هم جزء من بناء هذه المؤسسة رمز الحافظ من أنفو برو موجود طبعا عبد العزيز الصادر الشريكة في أيضا بناء يعني مش ليس فقط مذكرة تفاهم بالأكثر وأكثر 
قبل أن أقدم البرنامج دعوني أتوجه إلى كل من سهى نشأة استضافة هذا الغداء وبالذات أيضا إلى العشاء الذي ستقيمه الليلة ميرا اللوزي النعيم ورابي مع أربعة النعيمي وأريد أن أرحب بصورة شخصية بصورة شخصية جدا بامرأة كانت مهمة جدا في حياتي منذ البداية وساعدتني في أن أكون من أنا وأن أصل إلى من أنا ست ميا اللوزي أشكر أشكر ربي حقيقة لأنه أعطاني فرصة أن أكتشف عنصر رائع مثل الجيرة أسلان التي بدونها لم أكن قادرة على الاستمرار أرحب بس أرحب بكم تدريجيا لأعضاء المجلس الاستشاري ولكن أريد أن أذكر أيضا من أحد المساعدين الكبيرين لنا محمد عالم الذي أتى أيضا خصيصا من بيروت بهذه المناسبة قبل أن أستمر بهذه الترحيبات أريد أولا أن أعطي الكلمة لرجل في الواقع منذ البداية قال لي سأدعمكم سأقف معكم وقال لي أن أن الفكرة يعني ليست فقط جديدة من نوعها ولكنها بحاجة للتشجيع وللعمل منذ البداية قال لي أنه سيقف معنا وقد وقف معنا وقد كرمنا بوجوده في مجلس الإدارة في بيروت انستيتيوت و يعني في الواقع انه كل ما احتجناه اينما كان يتواجد ويقول ما لديه ان يقوله عن بيروت السجود ولنا كل الفخر والاعتزاز بان يكون سمو الامير ترك الفيصل هو الرجل الذي اتكلم عنه. لست من الخطباء المفوهين وبالتالي ساختصر قدر ما امكن الاخوات الذين سبقوني قدموا ما هي مؤسسة بيروت الفكرية وبالنسبة لي هي تعني انطلاقة جديدة في عالم الفكر العربي لأنها ستكون بإذن الله ملفة لمن هم مهتمون بهذا العالم وإيجاد السبل والوسائل والأفكار التي تعين العالم العربي على تخطي ما يواجهه من مشاكل والمشاكل كما ترون كثيرة فإن ألقينا نظرنا شرقا أو غربا أو شمالا أو جنوبا نجد هذه المشاكل محيطة بنا قذية ومن داخلنا أيضا فبالتالي كل ما استطاعت مؤسسة فكرية مثل مؤسسة بيروت أن تعطي لهذا الأمر الاهتمام والفكر والنشاط المطلوب كلما استطعنا ان نتخطى هذه التحديات. الملك فيصل الله يرحمه كان دائما يصف بيروت بانها رئه العالم العربي. وكان دائما يقول للقيادات اللبنانيه عندما يسير بينه وبينهم محادثات ارجو الا تكتموا انفاس هذه الرئه. وبالتالي مؤسسه بيروت هي القصبه. التي توصل الاكسجين الى هذه الرئه. فقدر ما ان المؤسسه تستحق دعمنا المعنوي والوجداني لكنها ايضا تستحق دعمنا المادي. ومجلس الاداره ومجلس الاستشاري للمؤسسه يسعون لتوفير هذا الدعم باذن الله والنشاطات منها على سبيل المثال باذن الله العام القادم وإقامة المؤتمر التأسيسي لمؤسسة بيروت الذي فضلت الأخت رادة وقالت أنه ألغي أو أجل من العام الماضي لأسباب أمنية في في بيروت ونتطلع إن شاء الله أن يكون فيه الوقت المناسب والمكان المناسب لعقد هذا المؤتمر التأسيسي في عام 2015 ونهاية أشكر الحاضرين معنا هذه المناسبة السعيدة وإن شاء الله الواعدة لمستقبل أهيج لمؤسسة بيروت وأتمنى للجميع التوفيق إن شاء الله ونتطلع إلى عشوة الليلة ببيت رامي تكون في مقام القائمين على هذه المؤسسة وأشكر
for those who have not, uh, who have been very tolerant with us in speaking Arabic, I just want to say that uh, the projects that uh, will be discussed right now by Dr. Adel Karim Al Ariani, former Prime Minister of Yemen, um, for many, many years, and whom I used to chase in New York whenever I needed a story. Uh, is uh, something he will be addressing, he will be describing in both English and Arabic. Dr. Ariani, you honor us by joining us, and uh, please come take up floor, and as you do, I also want to add, please come take the floor. I want to add that we also have had uh, a confirmation that uh, in celebration of our diversity in the Arab region, which we seek, uh, I want to add that uh, Dr. Farhan Saleh has joined and uh, a board of directors of Beirut Institute. We are very happy to announce that at this event. Dr. Ariane. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Sayyidah al-Shibiyaah al-Munadila Rabi al-Zurgham. Wa al-Zurgham min asnaa al-Asad. Wa la shakka anna walidaki kana asadan. Wa la hada sumi al-Zurgham. والمثل العربي يقول هذا الشبل منها من ذاك الأسد شكرا لك ladies and gentlemen allow me to also say a few words in English and the reason for that is that last month I was in Zurich attending the Global Leadership Foundation headed by F.W. de Klerk. And I was asked to talk about the Arab Spring and Yemen. I passed the judgment, some of you may not like it. I told them, most of you here are either political scientists or economists. Except me, I am biologist. And biologists are always interested in life cycle. Every plant or animal has a life cycle. But I will talk to you about the life cycle of the Arab Spring. It was seeded in Tunisia, germinated in Egypt, greened in Yemen, wilted in Libya, and now is dying in Syria. <laughs> say that it greened in Yemen because of the initiative taken by the DCC country. As a result, a smooth transfer of power took place and after all the difficulties and the changes that took place, Yemen had the first and the most important national dialogue in the Arab world. And that national dialogue was participated by 565 participants, 30% women, 20% youth. And the dialogue produced a far-reaching conclusion or recommendation or decision that Yemen, today a simple state, will become a compound or a federal state. And this is a very serious change in the history of any country. And that is the project or the proposal that I have agreed with Ravida that we will meet in Sama'a in the first week of September with many experts, as many as we can recruit, and you are all invited to come. And we will discuss in a very transparent way the pro and con of changing a country from a simple state to a compound state. And that is the project that we are going to work on. Thank you. Uh, points out, I don't know if I said that Mira Lozi is a member of the um, advisory board, but uh, I, we're, we're very proud to have you as a member of the advisory board. And we're also happy to have somebody Else who came from Beirut, and maybe more than one person, she's one and a half, because she's pregnant. Mireille Korab Abin Nasser, a member of the advisory board, one of the first supporters of Beirut Institute. Thank you for coming all the way, pregnant as you are from Beirut. Thank you. <laughs> well, there's a discussion in English that says, uh, when a good friend wants to say to you that they are a good friend of yours, and they want to assure you 
that you could depend on them. They say in English, don't worry, I have your back. In Arabic, in certain parts of the Arab world, you would refer to that person who has your back as sanadi, as sanad. And I have a real sanad, sanadi, in life as well as with Beirut Institute, a very dear friend of mine who has always supported me from the birth of Beirut Institute, and he said, uh, don't worry, I have your back. Uh, I can't thank him enough because he's also been the major supporter of Beirut Institute financially. My very dear friend, His Excellency, uh, Minister Marwan Khiruddin, my friend Marwan Fondal. When Madraghi spoke to me about Beirut Institute, I thought, what a great idea. Most of us, if not all of us in this room at least, have participated, and maybe on numerous occasions, in uh, conventions or seminars that are uh, dealing with issues of the region. Uh, I doubt that any of those major events that take place in the world, like the WEF and other, other, other institutions as well, target issues specifically in the region and come out specifically from the region. So I thought, what a great idea, this Beirut Institute thing that will create a think tank, an NGO that will propel uh, policies and hopefully uh, steer the huge change that needs to take place in our part of the world in every aspect of our life, every aspect of our life, from employment to our, uh, to our kids, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, political systems that must evolve and must change, to everything that, we, that has to do with our day-to-day -day life. And honestly, and maybe quite naively, I thought that uh, securing the funding for such an organization will be an easy task, but then learn quickly over the past three years that actually it is not. It's quite hard. At any, at any rate, I did participate in uh, most of the events that uh, the Institute has uh, done in the past two years, three years. Uh, but the two that marked me the most that I'd like to share with you is our uh, one, a conference that we had in Beirut with regards to the uh, refugees, the Syrian refugees in Lebanon, that are putting significant uh, stress and strain on our infrastructure, on our resources, roads, phones, uh, what have you, and we have yet to find a uh, credible and decent solution to, to handle uh, the refugees. Now, most people think that the issue is purely financial. It is not. I mean, even if we had all the money in the world, uh, Lebanon still needs to figure out a way to deal with the refugees that constitute uh, anywhere uh, between nothing and 25% of the total people living in Lebanon today. So quite a challenging task. We had this, uh, this uh, one-day conference in Beirut attended by very senior people such as, I can recall, the, the president of the uh, Red Cross, the national president of the Red Cross. We had people from the UN. We had several ministers uh, uh, that, that handled the refugees from the Lebanese government and what have you. And we came out with a policy paper that, had it been adopted by uh, Lebanon and some rural countries, would have probably found a solution to the refugees. Yet, the Beirut Institute did not have, and does not have until this very day, the cloud to actually enforce policy or to really promote policy very seriously. The, the second event that also marked me, that was again organized by, by the Beirut Institute, was a, a project in agriculture. Uh, Rally that came up with this idea that we studied and we, we, we played around with uh, of utilizing land in Lebanon, that agricultural land that is not being planted. So she thought, okay, we have the land that's not being utilized, we have the refugees that are not working, we have the demand in Syria for the produce. So if we could figure out a way to utilize the land and uh, allow the Syrian uh, refugees to work those lands in order to produce crops that are needed for the refugees in Lebanon and for the Syrian people that are uh, uh, facing hunger issues in many or, or lower, lower their towns, that would be a great idea. So again, I participated in that and I, you know, I, I got enlightened and there's quite a lot to do with that idea that we are hopefully going to develop even further and take to the GCC for uh, potential uh, GCC and United Nations for potential uh, adoption and, uh, and, and development. Um, I think the Beirut Institute has a chance of really uh, positively impacting uh, our lives. 
and if not our lives, most certainly the lives of our kids. But the Beirut Institute does require everybody's uh, help, everybody's commitment in one way or another, and in order not to leave things up in the air without, uh, without putting forth an idea that I would like every one of us to consider, we're having our inaugural meeting, which ought to be and will be quite big next year. If any one of you, and we'll be looking for sponsors, if any one of you knows anyone that would be interested in sponsoring, it would be great if you let Amira or Rahida know. Because I think by doing that, we would be securing the needed, needed funding for this, uh, for this conference, and hopefully that will be the seed that will propel this institution forward. Because quite frankly, without funding, it would remain a good idea, it would remain a great name and a very nice logo. But that will be the extent of everything that we've done today. Thank you very much. Many, many years. I've known her for over 30 years, and she honors us by serving on the uh, board of advisors of the Youth Institute. Uh, I will introduce uh, the rest of the, the couple of words in English. I don't know what language she's going to speak, but I, if I know her, she'll speak Arabic. Uh, so I will just introduce you the idea that she is going to be in charge of. She has been to, she was one of five women we brought to the United Nations to meet with the ambassadors of the Security Council. These five women came from countries of transition, countries of change, and they were Libya and Tunisia, um, uh, Egypt, uh, Syria, and Somalia. And they sat with the five, you know, with, with the ambassadors of Security Council uh, members, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the impression that they left on those decision makers was tremendous. So then we have, uh, and she came with five women, uh, four other women, Libyan women, on their own, I must say, admirably, I must say, they went to the United Nations to speak about something very, very important, which was how um, Libyan women, after the transition, have been sidelined, and how important is the role of women in the Arab region altogether in politics, not only in NGOs, which is very important, but there is a place for women in political decisions. My friend Farida al will uh, be uh, participating, she hates the word leading, uh, 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 seminar, and we call them policy circles, uh, that uh, she will be holding in Tripoli uh, about what to do about this issue of sidelining women after transition, during transition. Uh, she will be speaking in Arabic, so Farida Faddari. Shukran Jazeera. سأوجز لأن أعتقد استمعتم لكلمات كثيرة جدا شكرا راغدا لا أريد أن أتحدث عن المرأة الليبية كمرأة ليبية فقط ولكنني فخورة بنساء العرب في الثورة العربية المرأة الليبية ساهمت في إطلاق الثورة الليبية أول من صرخ أمام المحكمة في بنغازي كان النساء طبعا اليوم حينما نتحدث عن النساء في الوضع العربي أصبحنا نغير حديثنا فيما يتعلق بلغة الخطاب عن المرأة والأمن المرأة والديمقراطية المرأة ومحاربة الفساد المرأة والعدالة الإنتقالية المرأة والحوار الوطني المرأة والمستقبل العرب لأنني أعتقد أن لك نساء يشكل نصف هذه الأمة وأعتقد أن قيادة المرأة في المجالات التي أتيحت لها أدعك سواء في المجال الاقتصادي أو التربوي أو مجالات أخرى وآن الأوان بالنسبة لنا كنساء العرب ألا نترك السياسة للرجال فقط مع كل احترام للرجال ولكن عشت أربعون عاما خارج ليبيا كمعارضة سياسية ضد الجدافي وآن الأوان الآن ألا أكل حفظي أو حفيظي لنفعل نفس المساء اليوم القضية في المنطقة العربية ليست امرأة أو رجل قضية أوفان تصرق قضية أيديولوجيات جديدة مجنونة تسحتنا كالسوناني قضية معرفة وعلم وتكنولوجيا وجيل جديد قضية جيل قديم عليه أن يعتذر على أخطائه قضية سياسيين عليهم أن يتواضع وينزل ويستمع إلى أصوات الناس ويبعد عنهم المنافقين وسارقي التروات لأنه بدون ذلك لا اقتصاد لا شمال وأعمال لا فكر لا شيء أعلم أن الوضع العربي صعب 
واحيانا متازم واحيانا مؤسف ولكنني اقول لكم اليوم بالنسبه لي وبالنسبه للنساء في ليبيا دورنا هو دور السياسي بامتياز نتحالف مع كل القوى المدنيه الديمقراطيه الوطنيه التي تنظر الينا كمواطنات وليس كنساء فقط